Hello, and welcome back to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and I'm going to show you one more set of tricks for lyrics today. Uh, and that has to do with other uses for the lyric tool. Now, as you may be aware, in Finale, the tools that we have sometimes can be used for things other than what they're intended for. And the lyrics tool is no different. In fact, the lyrics tool is going to be sort of the main way that we're going to deal with figured bass, which I'm going to show you a little bit later on in this video. Uh, but you can also use it for other things. And I want to give a shout out to some of the uh, Finale Power User Facebook group members who uh, gave me some of these ideas about uh, how they use the uh, lyrics tool. So thanks for all of that. Um, so, you know, first of all, you can use the lyrics tool for uh, educational worksheets in this manner. So what I've got here is this little uh, exercise for your students to name these pitches. And I've got these um, sort of answer underscore settings here. And in my lyrics tool, I've got this set up in section two, I believe. Yep. And what these are is literally, I'll just retype this. Uh, they're just underscores. So shift uh, dash two, three, four uh, to give your underscore. And you can do that across, you know, for every single note. And you'll get this uh, nice line of uh, answer um, lines for you under each note. So that's uh, one use for um, the lyrics tool that's not actually lyrics. Another use is actually Roman numerals, right? And my Roman numerals I have set up on chorus one. I'm just doing this so I can organize this in my head a little bit. Um, and you can see this is just a normal uh, text font, the finale lyrics font, and I'm just typing in uh, Roman numerals. Now, the one thing I should have mentioned, when you use the lyrics tool for things other than lyrics, sometimes you do have to turn off the uh, auto word extensions. Otherwise, what you would have seen here is this one would have a word extension going through these uh, first three notes. So do make sure that you have the um, in the uh, lyrics pane of the document options, word extensions, uh, you may want to uncheck use smart word extensions. Now there is a scenario that's possible where you may have something like uh, Roman numeral analysis and lyrics in the file. In that case, what I would recommend doing is turning on the use smart word extensions but also checking the only crate on lyrics with the underscore. I went through this a little bit a couple of videos ago with a word extension uh, lesson, but essentially with this option checked, uh, Finale will only create an underscore if you, f if you ask it to by uh, typing a, a shift hyphen or typing the underscore character. So uh, if you're gonna use the lyrics tool for other things, you either have to have both of these options checked or none of them checked, I think is the way to go. Um, so that's just Roman numeral analysis. Other things that you can do with it, so I've got some snare drum sticking here, which I've set up, I believe, in chorus two. Um, and you can see that you just literally can just type LR, LR, LR uh, as you need to. And uh, of course, the good thing about, uh, you know, putting these in different sections like this is that if I wanted to, you know, italicize these uh, snare drum stickings, I could do that in one fell swoop, just like that. Um, also fingering. I've got some uh, simple trumpet fingering set up here, I believe, in section one. Yep. Um, so you can use the uh, the lyrics tool for uh, fingering. Now, th this is, uh, you know, trumpet fingering is, is fairly simple to do um, with the lyrics tool with just numbers. But um, I believe that if uh, there are fonts out there that will um, allow you to have, like, whole graphics of, you know, like woodwind fingerings or something. So you could see the whole, you know, sort of uh, clarinet type of, uh, diagram with the, the right holes closed and everything. I believe those types of fonts exist, so I, I think you can actually use those fonts within the lyrics tool, um, and then you just sort of have to learn how those um, how to type those those uh, characters in, as it were. So um, I don't have any of those fonts handy on my system, but I believe that that's another way you can do it. So you can do other things besides the simple trumpet fingering here. And then, uh, of course, figured bass is also the, the other main thing that you can do with, um, uh, with the lyrics tool, which I have set up in verse 1. Now, I'm going to spend a, a little bit of time on figured bass uh, just to kind of show you how this works. Because uh, the, the font for figured bass, and this font does come uh, with Finale, so I'm just going to show you what this is in the document options for fonts for my verse setup here. I have this font called finale numeric set and that's just a couple fonts down from the lyrics the finale numerics font does come with finale so you should have this on your system and i've changed it to 14 because the 12 size font just seemed a little bit too small for me 
Um, and th the way to use this figured base font is unique because uh, in order to get the numbers to stack on each other, I'm not using, you know, verse 1, 2, and 3 in this situation. This is all in typed into verse 1, but there's a very specific method of getting the numbers uh, to line up on top of each other, which I'm going to show you uh, just very briefly. I'm going to actually go ahead and delete all of these figured bases so I can start over. Um, so the way that you work with this finale numerics uh, um, font is thus. So uh, there's three rows, basically the upper row, the middle row, and the lower row. And in order to get a number in the upper row, you will use shift with the number. So I can press shift five, and you'll see the five appear. Uh, to get it to appear in the middle row, you just press the number without anything. So I can press three, and it will put it right below. To get a number uh, below that in the uh, in the bottom row, we'll use the option key plus the number. So I can press option one to get the one below. All right. Um, in order to move left, or, or actually you can only move right. In order to move right to an, another column, what you can do is press the back tick key, which is the which is the key below the escape key, and now you'll be able to enter uh, uh, figures in a different column. And uh, the, there are sharp and flat characters. The X is the sharp. So if I press X by itself, it will put it in the middle row, right? But if I press Shift X, it will put it in the top row. If I, or if I press Option X, it will put it in the bottom row, right? And let me just delete all this stuff. You can do it the other way, too. So if you needed to do uh, Shift X and then Shift 5, oops, you have to do Shift X, back tick, Shift 5 get to the next column you can do it like that as well or you could do shift 5 back tick shift X to get there all right so in this case I don't know a ton about figured base but I just managed to figure out this this little uh, simple passage here so for me it's shift 5 3 and then space will take you to the next one shift 6 3 space will take you to the next one uh, let's redraw that so we can actually see that um, the next one is shift six and then plane four space. This one's going to be shift seven. The next one is also shift seven. The next one will be, uh, I'm going to want the sharp in the, before the three in the bottom column. So what I'm going to do is press option X to get the sharp below and then back tick. And then I want seven, five, three top to bottom. So I'll do shift seven plane five and then option three to get it to appear like that. And sometimes I guess you have to redraw to get that to keep appearing. Uh, and then this is uh, shift seven. This is also shift seven. And then the last one is shift five and plane three. Uh, so that's sort of how you would uh, type in something like that. Uh, the X is sharp, Z is flat, by the way. I didn't have any flats in this uh, particular passage, but that's how you would do that. Um, and there are a ton of other characters. I'm about to show you the uh, the, the finale manual for the fin finale numerics font. And you can see the uh, accompanying keystrokes for every single character. So you can see shift one is the top, is one on the top column. Uh, one is the one in the middle, etc. And there's all kinds of numbers, but there's also all these um, extra characters where the, the numbers have slashes through it. I don't totally understand figured base in a hundred percent so I'm sure this makes a lot more sense to people that uh, are more familiar with figured base um, there's also all different kinds of accidentals including double sharps there's some pivot chords uh, different types of arrows that you can use again the theory is that the option key will be the lower row the plane key will be the middle row and the shift key will be the top row all kinds of brackets you can use you can also use letters Roman numerals um, dashes and other characters that you can use, boxes. Um, so, th you know, this whole, uh, this will tell you exactly how to type all of these characters uh, in the f in with the finale numeric font. I'll put a link to this uh, in the, the video description as well. Now, in addition to the finale numeric font, I'm going to show you a link from the, uh, the scoring notes page that um, uh, talks about another uh, uh, figured base font called Figurato which is another uh, font that may look a little bit better to you if you want to use something like this. It looks a little more elegant, maybe. Um, but you can also have all the slashes and the flats and sharps and, and everything. And uh, this system works completely differently, though. So uh, you will have to study how to type these in 
Um, it, it uses a different system than the shift plane and option to get the uh, the upper and lower. It looks like you just sort of type them in a row. So the 642 here, you just simply type 642 and it will put it in the right place. But then you have to put the, the B and the N and everything in the right order in order to get it to appear the way you need it to appear. So it's just a completely different system of typing it. It looks like a lot of the characters are the same. You get the slashes on the, the numbers and everything. So, uh, you know, it's a slightly different type of font, but uh, that's available to you as well. And I will put a link to this in the, uh, in the description as well. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's, you know, like I said, th the Lyric tool can be used for other things. It's sort of the tool that you really should use for figured bass. Um, and a lot of these other things are absolutely uh, useful to particularly the, you know, the snare drum sticking, Roman numeral analysis, um, you know, things like that uh, is really much easier done with the Lyric tool. Because if you think about it, what happens is the, the Lyrics will put everything on a consistent baseline all the way through that you can, you know, then adjust up and down. Um, and it will also not interfere with the uh, the items in the expression category where you would move those baselines up and down. You know, they'll they'll you'll have s uh, basically independent baselines for those. So, uh, lyrics tool is great for uh, certain things like this. All right, and I'm also curious. Uh, you know, in the comment section of the video, please feel free to uh, you know write in some other uses that you guys use for lyrics. I'm I'm really curious to see uh, you know what other types of things that you guys have used the lyrics tool for so and I'm sure that will help everybody else as uh, as they look at those comments too so all right so that's uh, the final tricks for lyrics video I believe um, I think we're gonna wrap it up there unless I think of something later on but uh, I think that pretty much covers the lyrics tool for now all right so uh, thanks for watching I really appreciate it and I will see you soon on the next video